Kelly. I've it keeps dropping frames, so we'll see how well this works. Normally, it's gonna drop again. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, normally I have water bottles behind me, and today I have all of my floss boxes, which we'll get to that in a little while. Um, wanted to talk about a couple different things. So, um, y'all all know that I am Kelly Ann of the Dyed Panda. I dye fabric for myself and for other people. Um, which I primarily do, I pretty much only do on a commission basis. Um, I've done a couple different commission pieces for, um, I did one for Michelle at Bendy Stitchy for Vicky. Um, I'm doing one for my friend Amanda. I've done some for Rachel, um, and a few others. And I'm so excited to keep doing that. Um, I do have a group on Facebook called Kelly Ann the Dyed Panda, um, which you can see updates from mostly right now, Vicki and Michelle, um, of updating their work as they're able to work on the pieces that they are doing on my fabric. Um, what I decided to do though is do live videos on there, um, either while I'm stitching or if I'm going to be dyeing fabric or um, if I get like a mini haul. So it's going to kind of be an extension of my Instagram and my YouTube. If you would like to go follow me at Kelly Ann, the Dyed Panda, one, you can see what I'm working on way before these videos. Um, many hauls that I may or may not show on my channel, as well as updates from people using my fabric. Um, and the live videos are gonna are kind of fun because whoever's able to jump on live at the time, um, I'll answer questions live there and things like that. So, um, I decided to do that primarily because I'm not constantly dyeing fabric and posting it for sale. I'm accepting custom orders for fabric, and that's just what I do. And I don't, ugh, why does it always have to update? All right, so I think that's what I wanted to say about that. I will put a link in the description box down below to my Dyed Panda page on Facebook. Um, something that I did today actually was I FFO'd something and that's because I am going to be giving it to my neighbor. Oh, try not to get the glare. Um, so this is the Dream Big Little one and I put it in a white frame. Um, my neighbor had her baby, her son on June 4th. So, um, I'm a little behind in giving it to her, but she's had family in town and stuff like that, helping her out with the baby. It is her first, um, baby. And so I've been giving her some time and I'll take it to her before this weekend. Um, the other thing I've been talking about on here is I've been using my phone to record some stitch along with me type stuff for, um, I tried doing it with my Hade and then whenever I went to the LNS with my friend Tracy, um, and I couldn't get the videos to come onto my computer so I could put them in a video. Well, my dumb self forgot that I have a brand new iPhone 7 and it comes with iMovie on my phone so I'm going to start doing some little vlogs. They may, I don't know. I've already started working on one that's going to go through this weekend because basically I'm going to be stitching this weekend, but I'm going back home. I don't have internet back home and I'm not going to be turning on my data a whole lot to check things or post things 
or do lives or anything like that or be able to watch those floss tubes for like three days. So I'm going to be busy whenever I get home. Um, so I was like, hmm, perfect time to test this out. So I'm going to put together a little vloggy vlog um, this weekend, kind of like show y'all some of the fun stuff that I do this weekend and some of the stitching stuff that I do this weekend. Um, and just give you a little bit more of a look into my life. If that's um, something that you would be interested in, um, they are going to be appropriately named. So next week you'll see, hopefully you'll see one of those pop up. And um, if that's not your thing, but you like watching my floss tubes, just don't watch the ones titled vlog, basically. Um, if you are into that, then you'll enjoy them. Um, okay, so what else? I have a lot to talk about, actually. I haven't done much since the beginning of June, but I have a lot to talk about. I don't know why, but I do. I mean, I do know why, but... Um, okay, so the... I don't know anyone in Breckenridge, Colorado. What are you people? Now my FaceTime is trying to pop up. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Segue. Um, all right. So the other day I went to Hobby Lobby. I needed to get some threads for actually all three projects that I'm going to talk about today. I needed one project for the new start that I had at the beginning of June, I've I did another new start. We'll get to it, and I kitted up something else for a new start, and we'll get to it. But um, so I bought some threads, I bought some more hoops, and I also bought some fabric that I need to dye. This I need to dye before July first because I'm giving it to my friend. On July 1st um, or actually June 30th but I digress my biggest ex most exciting thing oh and I will show you this I did buy some more packets of the my favorite needles that I like and they are by Yarnology I got them at Hobby Lobby they were $1.59 you get four needles they're literally called counted cross stitch needles and they're size 26 but I'm pretty sure I had one package that says size 24. I did. So, no wonder. Okay. So, they come in a package that looks like this. And these are the size 26. And I also bought some size 24. So, um... I always buy these. I think the tw the 24s are my actual favorite favorites. Um, so I guess actually I bought two of the size 26 and two of the size 24. 24 is my absolute favorite. The eye is a lot bigger. I don't need to have assistance with that. The eye on the 26s, I don't know if you can see that. Kind of, yes. I, I mean, I can. Um, the 26, the eye on it is pretty good, um, but it is a little bit skinnier. Um, so it can be somewhat of a pain. But um, the 24, those are my absolute favorite from Hobby Lobby. Um, the other thing that I got, which is what I'm most excited about, and I did a, a live video on Facebook of this the other day, so if you already saw that, I apologize, but my thread collection used to be in six of these boxes, six, and I had, um, well, I mean, you've seen it, I, I used to carry it around in a red Target bag, they all fit in there, and, you know, I would have them all stacked up in numerical order, and... I would take them out, backwardsly stacking them, and find my threads within them. Or put them away that way. So I invested in two of these double-sided thread cases. 
and I got it from Hobby Lobby. They are on Amazon. Several people talk about them. They're on Amazon for $11.99, but shipping is a bitch. Um, it was going to almost be $40 for two of these through Amazon because of shipping and tax. And at Hobby Lobby, they were $12.99. And I got to use my 40% off on one of them, which made it seven something. So, hello. So that's what I did. So I got two of them. Um, they're double-sided. One of these, um, I've heard from many people, will hold an entire DMC set. Um, but that is one floss card for each color in the DMC collection. And that's not including any of the new colors. That's including the old ones. So that's partly why I got two. I do have plenty of empty space in here, but there are several reasons for that. I have a bunch of floss cards missing. I have 32 whips kitted up. 32. I have duplicates of numbers in here because I was starting to collect all of them myself and I was given two sets, um, which I know that I haven't talked about in a really long time, but I have, I think last summer maybe, um, I don't remember the last time I talked about it, but so I was given two sets from two different people. Granted, they weren't complete sets, but... I have duplicates of things and I bought them or I was gifted them. So um, I wanted to leave enough room for whenever I finish um, whenever I finish a whip, I can put them back and not have to worry about it or worry about running out of room. So I went ahead and bought two. Now in the first half, and you do have to click these down decently well because paper cards are a little bit taller than the plastic ones. I have my main set on plastic cards and then all duplicates are on paper. There is a large section right here in the middle on both sides, so that's where I'm putting my extra schemes for the colors in this side. Um, whatever the numerical is, and the extras will go here. Um, so that way I can look here first. Oh, I didn't mean to leave that one blank, but I did. Um, I did mean to leave these two side ones blank, and I guess it's okay that I left that one blank. Did I do that on the other side? No, I did not. All right, it's fine, though, because eventually it will get filled if I ever get all of my whips done. Is that a thing? Let me know. I know for some of you it is. <laughs> Most of us it's not. Um, But I have plenty of wiggle room if I need to put – a decent amount of colors away if I finish a good whip um, or a couple of whips and I'll have that space to close it you do kind of have to press down a little hard but not too hard um, if you go the route that I went so this is the other half of the set again I left room out and this is how many like if this doesn't tell you anything this is how many whips I have okay so this is 3880. This is with spaces. Now, remember I said previously that one of these boxes can hold the entire DMC set, and I'm talking it fills up every single space, the entire DMC set, one of each color. Both sides completely jam-packed full. Now, I have this much space in this one, and in this entire long one for just skeins, extra skeins, I have the skeins slot in here filled with skeins and three empty boxes. And I almost have the entire DMC collection in one box. Like 15, 10 to 15 are not in here. So if that doesn't tell you how many whips, I have right now and how many threads are in them yeah hopefully that kind of explained it just a smidge um so in my second one like I said about 10 to 15 are not in that box so here's the rest of the newer bright colors that came out 
and the variegated. I do not have the newest variegated, which is like in the 4,000 numbers. I don't have those. These are the ones in the low, like the 50, I think it's like, this one's at 51, but I think it goes into like the 40s or 30s maybe. Or no, I don't know. And then up to like the low 100s. I have those back here. Um, and then extras of the remaining colors. So this is for my overflow once I start getting some of at least my bigger whips finished that have a ton of colors in them. I have a couple of floating bobbins apparently go away then I'm taking the other side and using it for tools and specialty threads so I have a bunch of extra paper cards I have my bobbin assistant which I only really use this whenever I was doing a lot of bobbin bobbinating um, I have my metallic DMCs right here. I have my Weeks Dye Works in this front pocket. I have my dyed panda threads in this middle one. My Gentle Arts back here. I have my Krennic right here. This metallic, it's, a, it's by Wrights. Monolic? I have no idea. Never used it. I just have it and sulky threads on this side. So lots of room to grow and, is that closed? That side doesn't close as nicely as the other ones, but there's also less in it. So I have two boxes with really super durable handles, lots of room to grow, a lot more easy to manage. Um, like if I'm going to embroidery B, I don't really need to take the second one right now. I can just take this and I'll be able to see if I run out of something, if I have a spare um, for anything that I'm working on and or help anyone in need of a color. So that's that. Let's talk about the pattern that I started in June instead of all of the things that I said I was going to do, which was updating all of my SALs, catching those up, and blah, blah, blah. Um, I talk about it in my Facebook Live, but the reason why, and I might have actually talked about it in my last video, I'm not quite sure, but I'll kind of like retouch on it. I really do want to work on my SALs. The Frosted Pumpkin one, I'm just kind of not in the mood for at the moment. Um, but I'm not disinterested in it. I just, there's a few other things that I want to work on first right now. And those are really easy to get re-caught back up. And so I'm not really worried about it. Um, I'm just having fun with a few other things first. Um, also... My Charity SAL by Citrovia, I absolutely love that one, but my biggest complaint at the moment is that um, the left-hand side touches the double blue line. I know that I keep on talking about it and I keep on harping on it, but I want to see what July's is, and I'm hoping that because she did two on the left hand side in a row. I'm hoping that the next one is on the right hand side. If it's not, I'm not pulling it back out until August because it would be easier for me to, if all of the left hand side touches the double line, it would be easier for me to fix the one, the one that I've done on the right hand side to touch that one then to alter the entire left-hand side. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. I would rather fix one than alter three and an, an entire side of a pattern. So that's why I haven't done that one. Also, the Mystery Band SAL by Linens and Threads. I wanted to work on that this month, and I still could. However, 
The bees came out for June and I kind of want to switch that with May so that way the bees are gold, not green. And I also want to see what July's band is going to be because I keep on saying that I kind of want to do a pattern change in the center of the bands. And so I want to see what the configuration would look like. And you might be saying, but you haven't finished January, February, or March, or April. And that is very true. Um, but there's also another issue that I talked about in a Facebook Live. Um, this week, on Tuesday, I woke up and my right eye was significantly more blurry than it normally is, with and without glasses. And so I actually went to the eye doctor and um, we did a whole bunch of tests. And I'm just keeping it short, but we did a whole bunch of tests and we, they dilated my eyes. I haven't had my eyes dilated since I was probably like, I don't know, 14 or 15. So at least 15 to 16 years. So that was a weird experience for me, um, to have done that again. It's been a very long time. And, um, <laughs> seeing what Potter was up to and, um, rechecked my prescription that way and it's changed a lot, primarily in my right eye. And so that's another reason why I kind of had to put down the pattern that I was working on and had to switch to this other new start um, because the pattern is just too small for me to see the symbols. Um, this week, I wasn't stitching a whole lot. I wasn't stitching a whole lot or very fast over the weekend. And then Tuesday, I just couldn't. So I switched for a pattern with very large symbols in the boxes so that I could see what the heck I was doing. Because this one is so freaking cute, but the pattern is so freaking small. So um, I had started at the beginning of this month, Barbara Ann Designs, A New World on Fabrics by LJ Mermaid's Playground, which I know this is a prim and I'm doing it on very flamboyant fabric, but I love it. It's amazing. So I started with World 3 because it's the center world and I got the first page. Each world is only two pages. I got the first page. So the fox about right here on the fox is the middle of the pattern. And so I worked over this way. So this is the edge. Every world is 46 inches high and 195 inches or inches stitches long. And so, um, just, this is the center right here. Oh, so the center is a little bit farther over. Or it's, it, this is like really close to the center. This little bit up here. Um, and this is the very bottom in the center, close to the center of World 2. Because I was throwing this page away because I finished it. And I wanted to make sure that I lined those up before I did that. And I did the same thing with the butterfly. And I was tempted to finish World 3 first. But I kind of wanted to move on to something a little bit different. So I did start World 4. So this is world the start of World 4, which is a trip to town. It's so cute. Um, I'm So far, I haven't changed any colors in the color palette except for this little dragonfly. He was supposed to have this light teal color for the wings, and I changed it to a light blue just so that way I started it with the light teal, and I just didn't like the way that it looked. It looked kind of weird, so I changed it to a light blue. I'm much happier with it. In the houses, however, um, something that I did change is around these windows up here. It's supposed to be gray. These windows, it's supposed to be gray. These windows down here, they're supposed to be yellow. And the window is supposed to, the inside of the window is supposed to be a dark brown color. And this wall is supposed to be not that color. Um, oh, it's supposed to be like an olive green color. Um, and it looked too similar to the gold border. 
So that's what I changed so far on this. That's what I changed on this house. And then on this house, the only thing that I changed is these around these windows. The top one was a, a different color from the bottom one, and that just kind of I didn't like it. So I made them the same as what's around the top windows. Um, so so far that's the only changes that I've made to part four. So I'm not changing the color palette in this one. I'm just relocating where the colors are going um, based on kind of what I want the houses to look like. I want them to be a little bit more symmetrical than the pattern lends to and to a degree I want them to look a little bit more whimsy and a little less um, I don't know splatter painted like whimsy in an organized way. Um, anyways, so this is a really, really fun one to work on. And I left it in the hoop and with my needle minder on it with threads in some needles because I'm hoping that I can get this back out before the end of the month because I really, I had told Michelle and Brittany like I could see myself just working on this the whole rest of the month. And then the thing with my eyes happened and the pattern is just not easy enough for me to read at the moment. Um, the other thing that I'm probably not going to get to work on this month is working on my Hade for page one and two um, because that was the goal to get page one and two finished by the end of this month. Um, it's just not going to happen. The Hades have just way way too small of symbols on the pages um there's just too much on a page if I do get it out I might be able to finish page one because I do know the borders of that and all that I've left on that page is black so if I get the hankering to pull it out I won't actually need to look at the pattern to at least finish page one so I'll keep y'all updated on here about that as well as my actual Hade videos, The Beastly Unsaved Rabbit Hole. So what I started on Tuesday night, because I can't take a night off from stitching. I mean, y'all feel me, right? I think you do. So this is fabric that I dyed. Um, I called it Lavender Snow. I love it. It's 18 count. I started um, the... TARDIS pattern that Pixel Power Designs had on sale for 48 hours only. Um, it's no longer, let me just, let me just throw this out here. Michelle and I are stitching this together and it's hashtag Toasty TARDIS SAL because it's a TARDIS sitting in the snow with a scarf on. It's adorable. Um, I don't have a full photo of this um, because Here's how it was presented on Facebook to buy. It said like basically like flash sale 48 hours. Um, this pattern will be on sale. So obviously we went out and bought it because, you know, I want to get it at a discounted price, right? Well, we took that as it's just going to be on sale for two days. Not, it's literally only going to be available for two days. I have been posting updates of this on my Instagram and in my dyed panda group. And I have been asked, where can I get the pattern? And you can't. I can't even get a picture because I was just wanting to see like um, these colors. Um, there's... It's a hefty color list. I mean, it's a pretty hefty color list. And then this line starts 10 blends with these colors. But this is the color list. Like, that's how long the list is. It's pretty hefty. So, um, there's only so many patches of, like, green and stuff. And the pattern doesn't come with a, like, finalized photo on it. And... It's not on their website anymore to buy or even see what it looks like. I tried Googling it. I tried by all different kinds of hashtags. I tried Googling it 
with the company's name after it. I tried just getting images of a TARDIS wrapped up in a scarf just to kind of get maybe an idea of what it could possibly look like whenever it's finished because I mean I kind of remember but I mean if I put this away my brain is not that good. Have y'all met me? Um, I've looked on Instagram. I've like using hashtags for the company for what it could possibly be named other than like the pattern is literally just called TARDIS. Also the pattern is kind of weird because where it says design by it has nothing, no info. And where it says company, no info. It's just a very weird situation. Um, anyways, I digress on that. So I'm really sorry. If you did buy the pattern in those 48 hours and you would like to join me and Michelle, please join us. It's going to be hashtag Toasty Tardis SAL on Instagram. And we would love to have you join us. Please let me know down in the comments below if you did get this pattern um, from the Facebook link. I think last week. If you didn't, I'm I'm really sorry. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. We literally cannot find any more information about it. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. But um, this pattern has... A really, really like big visual, like it's it's a it's a really easy to read pattern. So since my eyes have been hurting, this has been really nice. I've been able to still stitch. It's going pretty fast. This is two nights of progress, and I've had company and like kind of been on and off like cleaning and stuff. So pretty decent progress. Um, I've already done one of the blends. It looks really, really, really nice. I love this. Um, Lots of similar colors that kind of like fade into each other. It's going to be very nice and three-dimensional. Um, and it has a lot of backstitching. Just throwing that out there. Um, but if you did buy the pattern, please join us in the stitch along. Let us know if you're doing so on Instagram. We'd love to have you. Again, I really apologize that if you didn't get the pattern and you would like it, I, there's no link for me to give you. I'm I'm sorry. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is the kit that I kitted up. And Adele, straight to you, my love. I'm blaming. Um, <laughs> so Adele did her stash unboxing from the Soda Stitch owner. And Sewing Cats was in there, and it, like, blew up on her YouTube page where people were saying, like, oh, my God, I need that pattern. Finally released. It finally released um, on Etsy. And I'm sure other places, like, I'm sure you can get it from, so, like, I'm, several people sell Soda Stitch. Um, I got it from a Soda Stitch only seller on Etsy. I will put a link down below from the seller that I got it from. I bought it last, last Thursday or the Thursday before, and it shipped out the next day. It's coming from somewhere in China. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be waiting a little bit. But Adele has created, if you're going to stitch, the Sewing Cats pattern by Soda Stitch, and uh, let me pull it up. I will show you a little picture. I'll show you a little picture um, of what it looks like. It's so adorable. It's the cutest thing in the entire world. If you're going to be sewing this or if you just want to be an observer, you can join the group Dell Cats Sewing Pussies SAL. And you do have to be approved. You have to answer some questions. I'll tell you what they are. It's, do you plan on being an observer or a stitcher? Do you cross stitch? I think that's the first one. And then the third one is um, basically like confirming that you're aware that this group is to only, only post updates on this pattern 
in this group. It's not for any other soda stitch. It's not for any other pattern. It's not for anything else. It's only for sewing cats by soda stitch. So I got the rest of my threads for it. I am so prepared for whenever my pattern comes in to get this baby started, but she's doing a little SAL. There are no deadlines or anything like that. It's just a group of us that want to stitch this because it's amazing. And a lot of us are going to adapt some of the cats to be like our own cats or like our friends cats. I already have one that I'm going to adapt. And this smells really good actually. Um, so I dyed some fabric for it. So this is my fabric that I dyed for it. Um, I wanted it to be kind of all different kinds of colors because the pattern has literally the rainbow in it and it's amazing. And um, whenever I first dyed this, it was really, really, really dark and harsh and I wanted it to be more pastel-y and, you know, vibrant but not over vibrant. So I put it in a bleach water bath and it toned itself down. And this is the other side because it does look a little different which I think I'm going to stitch on this side though. Um, but I am really pleased with how this turned out. I think my, I think the pattern's going to look fantastic on it. So I'm really excited to get that. I also ordered one other soda stitch pattern in my order and that's going to be a surprise for whenever they come in and I'll show you that then. Um, I believe that's all that I have for you. Um, I wanted to tell you Nope. Books. Let's talk about books because I've got to tell y'all about some books. I really, really, really do. And remember, these are my opinions about books. If you like these books and don't, if I didn't like it, it's my opinion. I love that people are reading. That's all that I love. You, we don't have to like the same books. We don't have to. Um, I believe last time I had just finished Brooklyn. By the way, five star if I didn't say that last time. And I was almost done with a man called Uva. That's how you pronounce it. Uva. I've been saying it wrong this entire time. It's Uva. Um, five freaking star for that one. Please, please, please go read A Man Called Uva and I'm going to hunt down the movie. I have to see it. Like, I have to see it. Um, I'm going to check on Netflix and Hulu first. And if not, I may just buy it off Amazon. Um, it is apparently a foreign film. Well, because the book is, he's, in, he's from Sweden. Um, and so I believe it's a foreign film is what... Someone told me in a previous comment, I love foreign films, so that does not bother me to have to read subtitles. I just really want to see it, um, see how they portrayed the book in a film. Um, today, actually, I finished the book A Wrinkle in Time from the Wrinkled in Time Quintet. It's the first book. I did finish it. I gave it, um, I gave it four stars only because... It did take me a tiny bit to get into and a, 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 a small while to fully understand what the heck was going on. Um, but I have been reading some other things. Oh, and somebody commented down below that they had started S-Town, better known as Shit Town, um, and they loved it. I'm so glad. It is so good. Um... So, again, I will keep recommending that. Go listen to S-Town on YouTube. It was a podcast from This American Life. It is so, so good. You will fly through it. Um, I did recheck out The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. I need to finish that. Um, I checked out the book Dark Places by uh, Jillian Flynn. I have not started it yet. Um... <sighs> I started the book All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. I have like three hours left in it. I, 
the premise of this book sounds like it would be really good, in my opinion. It's about two different girls that went missing in this small town, 10, year, 10 or so years apart. It's very confusing to follow along the timeline because it starts out with day one and then it goes backwards to day 15. You work backwards back to day one and then it jumps to three months later. I'm like on day six or something right now. Every once in a while it starts making sense. And then it just doesn't at all to me. It's a very confusing timeline to figure out. For me right now, this is sitting at a two or a three. I'm going to finish it just to finish it because that's what I do. But this is, for me, this is not going to get a high rating. Um, I'll, I'll probably finish it sometime this weekend. While I'm back home, um, before it's due back. Mm. For me, it's not a recommend. It's not. It has a really high rating on Goodreads. A lot of people do really like it. But there are some reviews that feel the same as me. It's just too confusing. And you get very confused by it. The other book that I did start is The Witches, Salem, 1692. I started this in honor of Remember the Salem Witch Trials um, for the 325th anniversary. I am three discs out of 21 um, into it. It's by Stacy Schiff. Schiff? Shift? I don't know. It's, um, it's really good, actually. It um, basically like reading a history book. So I listened to a few hours of it and then I switched to something else. Um, but it is really good thus far. Um, I just have a lot more of it to go. Um, also I started, um, I ordered a physical copy of Hannah Hart's Buffering Unshared Tales of a Life Fully Loaded. Um, I am now in chapter three of the book. I've been reading it on my lunch break the last two days um, because it's a physical book. And I really, really, really like it. Um, but I like Hannah Hart's um, message and her personality. She's a YouTube person, um, but she's also a philanthropist. She's just overall, and she's hilarious. Um, but so far, the book is really good. Um, and I now have the hiccups, and I have no water around me for some odd reason today. Um, but I'm almost done. I started Hollow City, Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children number two today. Um, I did not get very far in it. Um, that's going to be the one that I concentrate on tomorrow at work while I'm working on things. Um, because what I've listened to so far, it's really good. Um, so I can't wait to hear more. And I also started, uh, Jillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. It hasn't sucked me in yet, but it did also take me a while to really get into Gone Girl. So I'm hoping within the next few chapters, I will get pulled in to that one. But that's where I'm at with books. Um, a few that I would really recommend and a few that I would recommend to stay away from. So let me know what you think about some of those books if you've read them or if you want to read them down below. Also, let me know what you're working on if you have any questions that you want me to answer in my next video or in a Facebook Live. Let me know down below. Um, I'm also, like I said, working on a vlog style video that you can either watch or not watch if that's not your thing or give it a try. And if it's not your thing, it's cool. Just don't watch the ones that have the word vlog in the title. Um, also, I'm working on a video. I haven't done like a get to know me or a facts about me type video in a very long time. So I'm doing a really long 
epic one that's coming soon. Very soon. So I will see y'all next time and happy stitching guys. Bye.